<laughs> All right. There we go. Um, I'm Kathy, too. I was here earlier. Um, and PJ and Alex asked me to come interview them for this very special live show. And I was very excited because I love Reply All from the beginning. And I still, it's one of those shows that I have it pop up to the top of my feed every single time. Uh, anytime you guys release a new episode. So, I have burning questions for you both. Let's do it. I host a podcast with my best friend, Tobin. Mm -hmm. I want to know, are you guys best friends? <laughs> we, are, we are very good friends. I say I spend more time with PJ than pretty much anybody else or the Reply All team. Yeah. Um, I remember when we were starting, uh, we like worked on shows and friends had worked on shows and the sort of like worst nightmare I could imagine is that you'd have a relationship with somebody that was fake that you had to perform when you went on a mic. Like you could be like feeling really antagonistic yes. and you can like bring that into the studio with you. Well, I feel that's like it's never been. <laughs> I feel like we've successfully done that. I think we're maybe like in real life a little bit sweeter to each other. I've been on the show? He did text me yesterday morning when I woke up. I texted him, good morning, sweet. Oh, no. Aww. And he responded, good morning, you sniveling worm. Wow. <laughs> so he did do that. <laughs> You're so proud of yourself. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're, we're very close. Okay. It, it's not just us. It's not, it's not for the mic. Yeah. Were you two friends before the show? Yeah, we worked on a... WNYC radio show called On the Media. We were both producers there. And um, sort of like the young, we, we sort of came on around the same time. We yeah, were there a and bit. we were we were like the same generation and also like, I think the youngest producers. Mm. Nazneen was six months younger than me, but yeah. Huh, or, okay, almost, technicality. <laughs> the least experienced ones anyway. The least experienced producers. Wow, and what drew you to each other? Our weird relationship started like almost right away. Really, really quickly. Like we just sort of found it. And then also we were good at, like producing a radio show is hard. Mm -hmm. And we were good at kind of like backstopping each other. Um, I'm pretty disorganized. Uh, mm -hmm. And Alex a lot of times would be like, hey, if you don't save that file, the bosses are going to yell at you. <laughs> uh, stuff like that. So it was sort of like learning how to do the job together. Yeah, basically. I have, because I'm such a huge fan of you guys, I have heard uh, rumors that the two of you have gone to couples counseling. Yes, it's true. This is true. It is completely true. Yep. Why? We were going through a rough patch. <laughs> <laughs> Making a thing with someone is very hard. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm sure you and Tobin have fought, right? In like the most passive aggressive way. We got sort of into aggressive. Right? Yeah, we were pretty aggressive. <laughs> the weird thing is that, like, so when we were starting, like, when Reply All started, the first couple of years we had such an existential threat to face. You know, just like, is this going to find an audience? Are people mm -hmm. going to listen? Is the company going to fold? And I feel like we actually had more trouble when stuff started working. Yeah. Like, that's actually harder to deal Wait, with. Wait, why? Because then we could... Once, once we were no longer sprinting, once we were no longer on, like, this crazy sprint, we had time to sort of settle into roles, but settling into roles was not comfortable for us because we'd always both just done everything. And there was like a natural, I think both of us naturally gravitated toward things that we were better at. I'm, be I'm, I'm like very focused on reporting. That's what I love doing. PJ is much more, he's a, he's a real editor. He's very good at it. I'm very bad at editing. I can't focus in edits. They stress me out. After about mm. three hours, I want to. I should say in your defense, like reply all edits go for like yeah, reply all edits go bet for between two and seven hours. So what? Yeah, <laughs> it's like a lot of like intense people that want to make something good and also are very distractible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's hell sometimes. But do you yeah. schedule it for like ten in the morning then? We start at ten. The last for, on the last episode that was solely mine, we did a an ep we did a edit that started at eleven and ended at five thirty, so six and a half hours. What happens during the edit? I don't know. It's a lot of like basically like moving furniture around the room, like being like, okay, well, what if this thing goes over there? And like you kind of have to do that. And, and then you write the sent you write a sentence, and then you're like, but that sentence doesn't exactly describe what we're trying to get at, so we need to fix that. Oh. The, the way I like explain what reply all edits feel like to people who aren't in them is like it's like watching uh, a big group of people mow a football field with like 
tiny little cosmetic scissors. Like, it's just, like, inching across <laughs> brutally forever. But, you know, PJ was get, PJ was moving more into, a, like, a leadership position. I was moving more into a reporting position. But there was, like, a natural resistance to this idea that, like, one of us was taking over the show we'd made together. Um, mm. We were both getting very resentful of each other and not feeling like our our respective parts were being recognized and we were just fighting all the time. And there were like some pretty touch and go moments there. Also because there's all these people, like then there's people like depending on you and like, I feel like people who've worked in radio have worked for, in situations where it's like the hosts aren't getting along and it's awful. Mm -hmm. And like everyone else ends up bearing the brunt of it. And like, yeah, <laughs> it's not a great look. Yeah, so yeah. you went to go fix that. Yeah. And yeah. it seems fixed. Yeah. We're in a pretty good place right now, I think. We're in a little bit of a relationship renaissance. Traveled to Arizona together. Oh. Got massages yesterday. Went Did you really? Last night. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not like a. We didn't get massages in like the same room. Next to next door. But we oh, did okay. get them at the same time. And then afterward, talk about them. Yep. Yeah. Tobin and I considered doing a couple's massage, and then we're like, Are we gonna see each other naked? Because that's insane. That's, yeah, that's, that's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. Um, PJ, are you really best friends with Queer Eye Sensation, Anthony Porowski? Yes. Uh, we, like, we met each other in... I thought you said you were best friends with me. Too. <laughs> I'm one of those, like, kind of polyamorous <laughs> best friend people. Um, he, we met each other in college, and then he, when we, we sort of moved down to New York at the same time. Uh -huh. We lived together for, like, a long time, where I was like, one day I'm going to grow up and make a radio show, and he, he wanted to be in television or film. It just like really worked out for him. <laughs> in a way it's really crazy. Um, but he's he's a sweetheart. He's great. Um, Alex, I recently listened to an episode of Ten Things That Scare Me that featured you. Oh boy. Okay. God, you were very raw and honest in that. Well, a lot of things scare me, but yeah. But do you remember what was your like top three in that list? I don't really because Amy Pearl who produces it was just like Tell me more, tell me more, tell me more. Oh, that sounds really bad. Tell me more, tell me more. So I, I don't remember, remember some of top. The things that, the thing that I remember most clearly, because it's the thing that I think about probably the most, is um, there's the two that I think about the most are like that my coworkers don't respect me and that uh, the world is going, that glo runaway global warming mm. is going to turn the world into Mad Max. I like those because they're such like different scale fears. <laughs> yeah. The one that stuck out to me was you said you were scared that you're, like, the best things in your life have already happened. Yeah, that's true. I am scared of that. Really? Yeah. But you've got kids. Yeah, but they've already been born. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> no, I'm just waiting. Wait, no, I'm just wait, counting you... down the days until they're like, Dad, I hate you. <laughs> well, one of them doesn't even speak yet. I know. but it's got a while. Yeah, but, well, she does speak. She says, Harvey, which mm -hmm. is my son's name. She says hi and bye, and dada, and I'm sure the next thing's gonna be I hate you. <laughs> we give it a couple of years. PJ, do you have similar fears? What are your top three fears? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I'm gonna die alone. Uh, I don't really worry about global warming as much as I probably mm, should. should. All of mine are like at the like sort of narcissistic personal level. Ah, uh, I see. Okay. Uh, podcasting will explode. Uh, Explode in a bad way or a good way? In a bad way. Okay. In a bad way. And I'll uh, I'll do something stupid and break my brain, and then I won't be what able. What do you mean to... break your brain? Like what? Like fall off a bike. Don't ride a bike. I don't. <laughs> what? What if I'm compelled to? By whom? Like yeah. someone holds a gun to your head and says, "Go ride this bike." <laughs> yeah, and then I fall off the bike. <laughs> like I should have just gotten shot. You know what? The scenario very is worth it. Yeah. Okay. Love this relationship. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite things about your show are the segments. You guys do really fun segments. Um, super tech support. Uh, Alex, can you explain the show and how it came, that segment and how it came about? Yeah, so super tech support is a thing where if there's an, a problem, a tech support problem that feels a little ex like kind of extraordinary, like bigger than you could handle on your own. Like it's not just calling AT&T and saying my phone's not working properly. Um, we will try and solve it. And so that, the way that segment came about is that PJ started working with a company called Handy, which is with like a, what was Handy? Like a cleaning company? They clean your, your house. They clean your house, And supposedly. he couldn't figure out how to cancel it. Yes. They had no, like, like literally no way to do it. There was like <laughs> nothing in the app, nothing on the website. They didn't pick up their phones. Like it was just like a trap. So uh -huh. I, I, w I figured out, 
Guys, there was a number. I just had to look for it. And so I figured it There's out. There's no phone, phone number. Called them and canceled. canceled it. Yeah. Does this happen <laughs> often? Does which part of it happen? Like that you have an issue and then Alex is like, I'm going to fix this. In real life, not that much. I tend to just not fix or address my problems. Uh, I'm subscribed to a lot of things I don't want to be subscribed to. PJ. I know. I love to unsubscribe from things. Uh, I wish that I had that follow through. <laughs> Can I just tell you guys the, the the thing that's so illustrative of how PJ lives his life? For like a year, he didn't have bookshelves, and all the books in his house were just in a pile, big pile, in the fireplace. That's true. In the fireplace. I thought it was kind of cool. It was non-functional, so <laughs> it's not like there was a risk of them catching on fire. But that that's where he chose to get do that. It, it was a year, right? Or yeah, more? it was a year. Uh, maybe a little more. Okay. Okay, what about yes, yes, no? PJ, can you explain this segment? <laughs> yeah, so this is a, it's a segment on our show where our boss, Alex Bloomberg, who is older than us and less connected to the internet, uh, if he finds something, usually a tweet, that is too confusing for him to understand, we will explain it to him. Uh -huh. But what it ends up being is that the ones we end up running on the show tend to be the kind of tweets that are sort of like five or six like internet in jokes that have kind of been fused together. Yeah. So usually the explanation takes a while and you get to like learn a bunch of things along the way. Do you remember how that started? The exact thing is he didn't know about Updog. Oh yeah. You guys know Updog? Is that true? Yeah. So you say like yeah. So you know I saw this guy the other day and he was like he was totally into Updog and then he says what's Updog and you say not much. What's up with you? And he was so tickled. He, like, that's part of what makes it work is he's like we very like, uh, charmed by all the things he does. We were like, let's just do this on the radio. This is fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, what was my, how do you keep up with all the internet stuff to be able to explain that? I feel like all I do all day is stare at like Twitter. <clears throat> and it feels slightly better than it would if it weren't my job, but it still feels pretty It's such bad. a bummer. Yeah. Aww. It's like being like a... I don't know. It just feels very dystopian. A weird thing happened over the course of our show being existing is that the internet stopped being fun in a lot of ways. Yeah. Really? Like, once Trump got elected, the internet became really fractious and weird. And it's always, it's been ever thus, but like it became much more apparent and it feels very different now than it did four years yeah, ago. Yeah, I do think that you, you guys have been explaining more of like conspiracy theories and like well, yeah, that sort of thing. A lot of what ends up being like popular and confounding is like, you know, Nazis have figured out a new way to be ironic on the internet. <laughs> like, yeah. that's literally what you end up covering if you cover the internet. God. Um, uh, reply all hotline. Yeah. Why did you guys decide to take phone calls for like 24 hours straight? Or was it 48 hours? 48, 48 hours. hours. Why? I, I think it came, me and Tim have a disagreement about whether it was my idea or his idea. What I do remember is that Tim was like, maybe we should only do 24 hours. 48 hours seems pretty intense. And you're like, no, no one will respect us if it isn't 48 hours. And then you <laughs> fell asleep in like six hours? Yeah. You that's, clown? I wanted respect, but I didn't want to do the work to get it. <laughs> uh, I don't know, actually, we used to talk about, when we were at WMIC, we used to talk about doing a telethon. Like, we were going to do like 24 hours and like have guests come in and blah, blah, blah. And it just, I think we're attracted to things that feel like it's an interesting experiment. Uh -huh. And one way it can work is like people could call and there could be moments of human connection and there could be surprises along the way. But if that doesn't work, you know that it's just going to be so terrible as an experience. Like Watching us slowly dissolve will make it worth it. So it's like bad as a person, uh -huh. but for making something for the show, it felt like a good insurance policy. I mean, even just editing down all of that tape. Oh, my God. No, I know. It took. I think it took like a couple months. It did take a couple months. I did the first pass in the first twelve hours, and it took me about a week. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. But it was fun, man. It was just like it was the kind of thing you just end up. It was fun. You slept. I enjoyed the sleeping part. I enjoyed just like. Wait, Alice, did you not get to sleep? He slept. I slept for a couple hours the first night, and then the second night I crashed about two a.m. Yeah. PJ I... took it home. Yeah. So one of you was awake at all times. Yes. Yes. That's terrifying. I would. I don't think I would do that. But it was cool because it was fun. Like you get broken down by tiredness, and you have different kinds of conversations than you would have as a professional interviewer if you weren't losing your mind. Ah, uh, okay. So that was kind of cool. Did you guys get mad at each other at all during that time? There is a part in that episode where I'm saying, with, with someone's like, "We should go to the bar," and I'm like, "Yeah, great. Get PJ. Where's PJ?" 
And then someone's like, just don't worry about it. You're going to go with Matt Lieber. And I was like, where is he? I was asleep on the couch. He was asleep. And they were like, he's asleep on the couch. And you can, you can hear me saying over and over again. And I don't know if I, if I was fully mic'd for it, just me going over and over again. What a fucking baby. <laughs> what a fucking baby. Are you fucking serious? I was sleepy. I'm tickled by this. Um, after doing all these stories about the internet, how privacy conscious are you both? I'm very privacy conscious. I'm yes. very not. Like, I'm super not. There's like seven people who have my, like, find my friends, like, have my location right now because oh, of my cell phone. And it's like, some of them are my sisters, but then just like, there's my friend, like, Ahmet, who I don't see that much. Like, and we just, he's just like, oh, how's, uh, how's the deli that you're at right now? Uh, I don't know why I chose right. to do that. Yeah. No, it's not great. At the same time, like, the kind of stories that I want to do and end up doing is like I walk into a discord full of Nazis and I'm like, hey, my name's Alex. What's going on? By the way, I'm Jewish. Like, it's, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm much more casual about about going to places that I don't think you'd want to go. And I think that's part of the reason that you're privacy conscious because yeah, yeah. you're worried at some point somebody's going to come for you. Yeah. Right. Should I say your address? If you, if you, if you're feeling bold. I'm not. <laughs> okay. Um, I was told that you both recently went camping. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why? Uh, I had a bad idea, which was that I read this thing. I'm really scared of horror movies. I mean, I same. But I wanted to get out last year. I was, like, so mad that there was this big cultural thing that I was too much of a coward to enjoy. Uh-huh. And so I read this study about how people who are afraid of scary movies can do exposure therapy by watching scary movies and then they can enjoy them. And this like brilliant psychologist who came up with a method, blah, 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 he died a few years ago. And so instead we were like, so Alex- without a map, I was like, I like horror movies. I can scare you. You, you love horror movies. I do love them. <laughs> I fell asleep watching one last night. So he's been setting up this like experiment where he finds different ways to scare me. They all basically work. Uh, but one was that we had to go out in the woods and then a lot of spooky things happened in the woods. Can can you reveal any of them? There were dolls. Oh my god! <laughs> there was like weird children's voices. Oh my voices god! Like a walkie-talkie. Yeah, there's a walkie-talkie with creepy children's. Voices. Also, this is gonna sound like a joke, but really the scariest thing was just camping. I hate it so much. <laughs> and Alex brought no bug spray, which like my arms are still messed up. I can see it. He also was like, I was like, what did you bring for dinner? Oh god, will you ever shut up about this? Mixed nuts. No, no, no. Okay. Not mixed nuts, you fucking idiot. Trail, Trail mix. <laughs> mixed nuts. Trail mix, which is way better. It is better. Crackers. Has... Just plain crackers. I brought your favorite kind of crackers. That's true. Um, well, the generic brand. And then, uh, <laughs> what was, what else? Not counting the stuff we got at the gas station the last Cliff minute. bars. <laughs> And date and nut clusters. We had all the nutrients you needed for a good night. What did like you want me to like do? A did you want me to cook a whole meal? I was the one carrying all the stuff. I knew I was going to have to set up the tent and make the fire. I knew I was going to have to do everything. And you wanted me to make dinner, too? Just bring some sausages, man. <laughs> I meant to bring some salami, and I left it in the fridge. And then, <laughs> and, then, and then when he told me that, he was like, I put it in the fridge for you so it wouldn't spoil. Like, he wanted Aww. credit for refrigerating cold cuts. <laughs> <laughs> we had a lot of fun. We did have a lot of fun. That's good. We and bought a bunch of Slim Jims at the gas station, too. So. And some marshmallows. And marshmallows. We had a whole bag of marshmallows. Great. Wow. <laughs> I love to end on that note because they're laughing at each other. Yeah. Um, thanks, everybody, for uh, coming to Reply All. Thank you, PJ and Alex, for being here. Yeah, of Thanks, course. Rico, for having us. Um, I think it's time for everybody to leave, right?